Hi, this is Roger in Finland, and today I'm gonna try to give a simple explanation of what does it mean to have lossy or lossless compression for video or data in general. So for the impatient ones, lossy compression is that after compressing it, you lose data, and lossless it means that after compressing it, you don't lose data. So when you uncompress the things, everything that was there is still is, and if it's lossy, something got lost on the way. But I'm gonna try to explain with some uh, very like day life examples because we do compress data even when we speak and why would we want to use lossy compression? So I'll try to go through these things. But now imagine for a moment that this is our data and now it uses quite a lot of space so I cannot put this in my pocket for instance, but now I'm gonna compress it. But just by folding it, what I'm doing is taking the same data but now it would fit in a much smaller space so i could now put this thing in my pocket but now if i unfold this or i uncompress it all the data that was here a moment ago is still here grant you if the uncompressed algorithm would be better you would not see the folding bits but that's how it is but now let's see what happens here um, I have it still in this size, but this might still be a little bit too big or because it has these sharp edges, it doesn't quite fit in the pocket. So I'm gonna do a lossy compression. If I cut the corners, this now, it's easier to fit in my pocket. I had the original data, but at the moment that I uncompress it or unfold it, this is no longer the original data that we had. And this is what lossy compression in a really, really short and silly explanation is. But let's think about another example, a shopping list. That's something that we do in daily basis and it's an excellent example of compression. Sometimes it's lossy and sometimes it's lossless. So here I have the shopping list which says that I need six eggs, five apples, seven potatoes, one kilo of flour, three cucumbers, two tomatoes, two red paprikas, one can of black pepper, one can of oregano, and one can of rosemary. This is lossless, but it is compressed. And let's check how would this look uncompressed. Egg, 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 apple, 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 potato, potato, potato. You know where I'm going with this. This would be the same list. It would contain the same ingredients and things to shop, but this would be uncompressed and it would be much, much longer. The lossless one is a lot much more compact and it's still easy to understand and we're not missing anything. But there is a way to have a shopping list with lossy compression. If for instance we would say 6x, 7 potatoes, 1 kilo of flour, salad ingredients and spices. Here I compress the can of black pepper and oregano and rosemary by listing spices and here what this will mean is that whoever picks this shopping list, unless it's me and I knew exactly what I wanted, it will have to interpret or do some guesswork. And that's what happens when you uncompress lossy information. Just computers and the algorithms need to guess some stuff because it isn't there. But as you can see, you're compressing in lossy or lossless mode information every day when you make shopping lists. So if using lossy compression, it means that we are losing data. Why would we do it in the first place? Well, one big reason is space. As we saw with the paper example, the reason that we wanted to compress was to have the same amount of information, but in a much smaller space. And when we made it lossy is because we want it even a little bit smaller, depending on how much things are compressed and what technology is being used. A lossy or a lossless was going to be a lot more compressed or less. Still, the point stands smaller space than the original data set. Another reason is that sometimes you might actually discard data which was not useful in the first place. So even if you're having a lossy compression, it doesn't matter so much. But let me use audio to illustrate this as an example. So in the spectrum of frequencies, um, humans, we can hear from 20 Hertz up to 20,000 Hertz. And these microphones claim at least that they can record from 20 Hz up to 20,000 Hz. However, most adults cannot hear above 15,000 Hz. So now the question is, if we cannot hear those frequencies, like from 15,000 above, and even if the microphone is picking them up, what is the point 
of recording them? What is the point of storing them? What is the point of using space for doing that? So if you think as the whole spectrum as the data that we're trying to save, and we just take away anything above 15,000 Hertz, that's a lot of data that we don't need to care about, but actually didn't matter in the first place. Because when you're listening or playing it back, even if it would have the data, you would not be able to hear it. So that's the reason why losing data or using lossy compression, sometimes it's not only saving space, but it's discarding data that it's not useful. And here I'm obviously simplifying everything very, very much. I will not go into the mathematics behind any kind of compression or the algorithms. Reasons behind that is that I'm no longer familiar with them. And then I'm just trying to give a simple explanation of what compression means, what lossy means, what lossless is, and why would we want to use either one of them or why they are being used. Then if we think about video compression, which might be one of the reasons that you are looking at this video and in this channel, here I'm gonna talk now about long GOP or group of pictures. I think I did talk about it in one video I had about Zcam, so you can check it up there, but I'm gonna explain it here because it's relevant as well. So that's how most consumer cameras record video. In some of them, like the uh, Olympus M1 Mark II that I'm shooting right now, it has all intra codecs, the GH5 has all intra, I believe that the A7S III has all intra, but all intra means that one frame within your video is encoded within itself. And a long GOP or long group of pictures, what it means is that to encode frame or to compress the information in one single frame, it uses the previous and after frames. So basically it uses a group of pictures to define what is in one frame. That sounds complicated, so why would we want to do that? So let me use language to describe it. Now think about the scene that you're watching right now. It's just this talking head and the background is static pretty much all the time. So to describe this scene, I could say everything which is within this area that now I'm highlighting, that's data worth keeping, but everything outside this area, which now I'm highlighting, this is the same and stays for the whole video. Why would you need to keep that information for each frame if it's gonna stay the same? That's an oversimplification of how long GOP works, basically saying, all right, this has changed, but the rest of it, it's exactly like the same, that previous frame and like two previous frames goes. Instead of saying, this is white, and here we have these boxes, and here we have this dude talking. You only need to say, this dude is still talking, keep an eye on it, but everything else in the background, it stays the same. So what that means is that you need to deal with less information because you're referring to information that already exists in the previous frames. And since you're dealing with less information, you can use less space when recording that and saving that into memory. And if you're old enough, which I am, and you have used Skype and MSN in the mid 2000s, you might remember that, well, the video quality was a bit different than what we are used to nowadays, but probably you remember that you were having a Skype call with somebody, things were looking okay. And at the moment that you moved a little bit too much or something happened in the background, everything became massively blotchy. And that's because that's how it was compressing the image. It was trying to say, well, it's static, just keep it that way, keep on showing it again, and let's focus on what changes that little part of the face. As soon as things started to move around more, then the algorithms and the codecs started to freak out and say, okay, I don't know what to do with all this data. Uh, this looks like this is changing. And we had all those blotches. So if you're old enough, you might remember that that was because of video compression. I know that this video didn't improve your video making skills, but if you were a bit curious about what is lossy compression and lossless compression, and you had no idea about the inner workings, maybe now that I've been using these metaphors or examples of real life where we actually use lossy and lossless compression to do things like a shopping list, maybe that helps you a little bit to understand it a little bit more. And let me know if you would like to see more videos like this that I would try to explain in as simple terms as possible some maybe complex concepts that we use in either video or audio making and recording. But I hope you liked this video. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe. And we're going to see you soon for some more content.